Humanity is undoubtedly a young species, having gained absolute dominion over the planet only a few millennia ago. There seems to be no species in sight capable of wrestling this dominion away from us or succeeding us for many millions of years. Barring unforeseeable and improbable catastrophes that would annihilate the species to the last individual, humans have a long future ahead spanning hundreds of millions of years. Or rather, not humans as they are now but the numerous species that will spring from them. It is highly improbable that the current traits of the species will remain frozen forever, or that they will evolve in a single direction. Can anyone truly envision what humans will be like in 10 or 100 million years or even more? Yet there is no doubt that these years will pass. What then will happen to the human species during this interminable period? It will evolve, certainly, but how? Will humans themselves guide their evolution towards a predetermined goal? Or will they, once they reach a stage deemed satisfactory, be able to freeze their development forever? On these points, I am extremely skeptical. For 4 billion years, natural selection has adjusted and reassembled our bodies, leading us from amoebas to reptiles, mammals, and homo sapiens. However, there is no reason to believe that homo sapiens is the final destination. Some relatively minor mutations in our genes, hormones, and neural structure have sufficed to transform Homo erectus, which could produce nothing more impressive than flint knives, into Homo sapiens, capable of constructing space shuttles and computers. So where might some changes in our DNA, hormonal system, or brain structure lead us in the near future? A study conducted a few months ago attempted to envision the anatomical changes we might undergo due to excessive smartphone and computer use. In short, a couple of centuries from now, we might all be hunchback, short, without necks, and with claw-like hands. Not exactly a pleasant sight. But this was mainly a provocation, a kind of thought experiment designed to make us reflect on our relationship with technology. The actual process of evolution does not work this way. Once upon a time, there were two main schools of thought on how evolution operated. To illustrate their peculiar properties, let's provide a somewhat simplistic yet not entirely inaccurate description of Darwin's theory of evolution. Imagine a population of mammoths present in Siberia during a period of temperate climate before the advance of the ice. According to Darwin, the quantity of hair covering these elephants' bodies would vary entirely by chance. When ice advances and local conditions become harsher, mammoths with thicker hair are more likely to survive and consequently have more offspring. Since offspring inherit the amount of hair from their parents, in the next generation, mammoths with thicker fur who will continue to be favored by natural selection as long as the trend toward cooler climates persist, will present an even larger percentage. This process, where the average amount of hair increases, can continue for many generations leading to the evolution of a species of robust woolly mammoths highly adapted to the cold. According to Lamarck, however, the quantity of hair covering the mammoth's bodies would not vary randomly. When the ice advances and local conditions become harsher, only mammoths with thicker hair will develop as the environment determines the direction of mutations. At this point, all mammoths, as generations pass, will have thicker fur and pass this trait on to their descendants. History eventually validated Darwin's theory, which is why we should not believe those who hypothesize that future humans, for instance, will have weak and slender legs due to cars and a sedentary lifestyle. Individual characteristics are not directly transmitted from parent to child, but are filtered through the survival of the fittest. Thus, we will have slender legs only if they offer a clear survival advantage. Before moving on, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Make sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our daily videos. In light of this, predicting the appearance of humans in the next millennium becomes nearly impossible because it's impossible to forecast the environmental conditions that will drive evolution in one direction or another, right? 
No, wrong. This is because the human species is no longer subject to the laws of natural selection. Even today, it is capable of correcting and improving almost all aspects of its own body without patiently waiting for natural selection to work its magic. So what will the humans of the future be like? Will they have larger eyes and longer fingers? How many and what types of teeth will they have? Will they be hairless? What traits will they mutate or adapt? The answer is simple. The humans of the future will be what they choose to be. In the not-so-distant future, though in reality change is already underway, genetic engineering will be capable of manipulating the old Homo sapiens body, rewriting its genetic code and reprogramming its biochemical balance. Biomedical engineering will take us a step further by grafting non-organic tools onto the organic body, such as bionic hands, artificial eyes, or millions of nanorobots navigating our bloodstream to diagnose problems and repair damage. Such an android body could harness abilities far superior to any organic one. After all, humans have been compensating for the loss of legs and hands by attaching rudimentary mechanical limbs to their bodies for time immemorial, which perform similar functions in some way. With the advancement of technological progress, the field of physical deficiencies that can be compensated for with mechanical devices is expanding rapidly, and there is a concerted effort to replace increasingly complex parts of the human body. Eyeglasses, hearing aids, pacemakers, artificial kidneys, artificial lungs, etc. are the first rudimentary attempts in this regard. But we are already well on our way to developing artificial limbs that can be directly controlled by the nervous system rather than the muscular system. In a few years, blind individuals may regain their sight through electronic devices directly connected to the optic nerves. Artificial hearts, kidneys, and exoskeletons enabling paraplegics to walk are also under development. Naturally, these organs are implanted to replace their organic counterparts that can no longer perform their functions. However, very soon, within a century, technological perfection will be attained to such an extent that many people will prefer these artificial organs over their own, even if they are healthy. These things might sound like science fiction, but they are already a reality. Recently, some monkeys have learned to control bionic hands and feet not connected to their bodies thanks to electrodes implanted in their brain masses. Some paralyzed patients can move bionic limbs or operate computers solely through the power of thought. If you desire, you can already remotely control the electrical appliances in your home using a special helmet, which is already available on the market. This device doesn't require brain implants. It operates by reading the electrical impulses passing through your skull. If you want to turn on the light in the kitchen, just put on the helmet. Visualize a pre-programmed mental signal, such as your right hand moving, and the switch will illuminate the room. At the beginning of 2015, several hundred employees of a Swedish company who volunteered had microchips implanted in their hands. These chips are the size of a grain of rice and store personalized security information that enables workers to open doors and operate photocopiers with a simple hand gesture. Inevitably, step by step, highly sophisticated artificial organs will replace the entire human body, except of course the brain, which constitutes the very essence of an individual. All these organs are designed and built to replace the diseased parts of otherwise condemned organisms. In the face of the alternative of death, sooner or later an ever-growing number of individuals will choose to replace their entire original bodies and survive just as a brain nourished and served by a mechanical organism. Furthermore, these mechanical organs will reach a level of perfection and efficiency such that many people will prefer them over their own organs, even if healthy. These organs and bionic prostheses will be constructed in a way that enables them to process, receive, and transmit signals in the same language used by the brain. The brain will learn to use them directly without intermediaries. In essence, we will build mechanical organisms subservient to human brains. At this point, the brain will inevitably demand to have a multitude of organs and sensors directly under its control to maximize its capabilities. Currently, humans use tools such as microscopes, telescopes, radios, televisions, 
various work tools, computers, cars, airplanes, etc. to perform certain actions and compensate for specific deficiencies in their bodies. These tools are of course separate from the human organism, but the brain uses them through the intermediary of muscles and the five senses. Once these intermediaries are eliminated, the brain will be able to take direct control and use all of these tools. The mechanical organism that sustains and serves the brain will be enriched with an array of highly sophisticated equipment and instruments, which the brain can use as its own sensors. Such an individual will possess unimaginable power for us poor flesh and blood beings. Their gaze will span effortlessly from the extremely small to the very distant. They will see in the dark using infrared rays, navigate through fog using radar waves, and communicate through sound or radio waves. They will receive and transmit images and record an enormous amount of information and images in their auxiliary electronic memories. Most importantly, they will be able to live in any environment, even in the vacuum of space, because their brain will be adequately protected and they will have unrestricted mobility. This will give rise to a new hybrid species with unimaginable development and expansion possibilities. This species will be free from the physical and environmental constraints to which traditional living organisms are subject. It will have virtually no barriers to colonizing other worlds, such as those lacking in atmosphere or with extremely low temperatures, which would be inhospitable for humans with their original bodily structure. The concept of such a species might seem overly science fictional, yet unless there's an improbable reversal of current trends, the first members of this human species destined for a remarkable future will start appearing very soon. We could say that the first cyborgs are already among us. Anyone who has a mechanical organ is an unwitting pioneer. Throughout the world, laboratories are working relentlessly, albeit unconsciously, to launch this new species. A species that, even in its pursuit of bioengineering, will likely strive to maintain a human appearance, albeit aesthetically enhanced. This will spare us from the gloomy physical evolution depicted in the earlier study we discussed. Instead of generations of hunched individuals glued to computer screens, we might witness generations of superhumans in the best sense of the term. Let's hope so. However, another significant issue arises – overpopulation. The more Earth's future inhabitants there are, the more people will potentially be excluded from the race for technological immortality, assuming that the geopolitics of the planet remain unchanged. This would inevitably lead to the formation of an elite class of superhumans, rather than widespread sharing of valuable technological resources. It seems that this bionic revolution can only be feasible if, in the meantime, we find a way to stabilize the global population within acceptable limits. In my opinion, no more than 2 billion people. The post-human condition would represent the outcome of our species' evolution, a metamorphosis made possible by the alliance between increasingly profound scientific knowledge, capable of unlocking the mysteries of nature, and ever more sophisticated technical manipulation skills. This would be a humanity infinitely more intelligent, less vulnerable, longer-lived, richer, endowed with extended sensory abilities and augmented physical capabilities. It would be an unrecognizable and presently unimaginable humanity. But precisely for this reason, if it were to happen, it wouldn't be human anymore.